Salutations, Scoob Believer. Do you have a dream of becoming an entrepreneur, but don't know where to start or even what to do? Where can I gather information quickly about what's in my zone of genius? Don't worry, Scoob Believers. I got you covered. Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt and check out an amazing set of AI prompts that will give you ideas, information, and articles to help you get across that start line. Once again, go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI prompt to get you started now. Good luck, Scoob Believer. Hello there, Scoob Believer. Hey, if you're anything like me, I am just so tired of going from screen to screen to screen, trying to figure out my analytics for all my social medias and trying to figure out where I can put any and all my energies to get as much reach as I can. Well, I think I've finally found the solution. Elementary analytics. That's right. Elementary analytics. Now, at a single press of a button, I can see all my social media analytics from Google to Twitter to Facebook. All my important information all on one screen. All on one screen. Can you believe it? And if you really needed to, you could print charts for any possible meetings you might have. If you want to learn more about this amazing program, go to tuepodcast.net backslash EA for a 14-day free trial with no credit card needed. That's tuepodcast.net backslash EA for a 14-day free trial. Try it right now and see what it can do for you. Undiscovered Entrepreneur, episode number 34, and there's so much more. Really is like you have to work on being really resilient to failure and everything. I very much seem to learn more from my failures and everything than I do from my successes. And that's not that I don't acknowledge them. It's just I put a lot more effort into analyzing those and really considering them um, than I do the successes. Welcome to the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, the podcast where brand new entrepreneurs come to life and could quite possibly be discovered. Join me, DJ Scoob, and the rest of the Scoob Believers as we help these new businesses become a reality. And now, away we go! Hello, Scoob Believers, and welcome to the Undiscovered Entrepreneur, and it's me, DJ Scoob, (laughs) coming at you on whatever device you happen to be listening on. And I want to say welcome to part one of our three-part series of experienced entrepreneurs that we're going to be talking to over the next few episodes. Today, we're going to be talking to a gentleman named Andrew. Now, Andrew is a very experienced entrepreneur that has seven businesses that he's been working on. Now, he's actually a software developer, and he's currently working on an engaging platform for augmented reality. Oh, I just love that stuff. I really love being able to get into uh, a whole nother type of world that I'd like to explore. And it's a type of freeform content for creators. So in this episode, you can actually pick up and sense a kind of, I don't know, like a a theme. It's a theme. There's a theme happening in this episode. Let's see if you could actually pick up on it. So without further ado, let's listen to our friend, Andrew. Scoob Believers, and we are here again with another amazing entrepreneur. Today, we're here with Andrew. Hey, Andrew, how are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for being on The Undiscovered Entrepreneur. I really appreciate it. Now, I have a really, really serious question to ask you, okay? Okay. All right. Are you a Scoob Believer? I am a Scoob Believer. All right. All right. Thank you so much for being a Scoob Believer, Andrew. I really, really appreciate it. All right. So, um. What I'd like you to do, we're going to get started here by just, you know, give me a little bit of history about who you are, what you do, what your entrepreneur adventure is, and really kind of how it all really got started. How it all really got started. So, um, okay, well, so uh, my name is Andrew Mail. I am a 
I'm a longtime self-taught software developer. I started working with software when I was about nine years old, and I am much older than nine now. <laughs> Don't need to get into the specifics of how much. Um, I, I've been starting businesses since the age of 16, and I'm currently on my, uh, I think, my seventh business, depending on how you count. Uh, I'm building an augmented reality platform for freeform content creation. And um, kind of how I got here, I have i don't know. I, I was very fortunate. I have always had the opportunity to start things, and I took full advantage of it every time that I could. Um, so I, I don't know. My, my origin story is just very blurry because it's always been there. I've always wanted to create clubs and and then businesses eventually and things like that. And, and nobody stops me. It turns out that they just let you do it. So so here I am. Uh, that's, I'm glad they let you do it, too. That's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, you know, augmented reality, that's a really big thing going on right now. Uh, we have a lot of virtual reality happening, metaverse and things of that nature. I'm, I'm still my I'm cross-eyed trying to figure it all out myself. So, you know, guys like us, we started with 8-bit video games. We have no idea what this augmented reality thing is going on about. So but that's great. That's awesome. <laughs> So now, when you first got it started, hey, especially when you really get things started, you have pitfalls and problems that you come across. Uh, when you were first getting started, do you have any particular pitfalls that kind of stick out in your mind that kind of happened to you that kind of made you kind of, ah, oh, what's going on? I mean, does anything like that come to mind? Yeah. Um, I've, and I'll tell you what, for the sake of this conversation, I'm just going to focus on on my, my current business, Untethered. Um, but yeah, I, I actually, very early on, I was actually doing another business with another co-founder, and uh, we just kind of ended up having some friction and everything and, and went our, our separate ways. And I have to tell you, like, that was that was a very difficult and, and painful uh, thing to go through. Um, I've, I've not had that happen very often in my life, thankfully. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, easy easy shot is is that. Um, splitting ways with a, a former co-founder, absolutely a, a very difficult thing to do. It can be too, because you know you been through a lot with each other, and you, and you go through the the heartaches and the problems, and you kind of and you become friends and things of that nature. And it's really hard when things got to come, you know, when things kind of happen that way. Um, did you learn anything specific from that failure? I mean, I, I don't want really want to call it a failure, but just you know, a circumstance that happened. <laughs> um. Uh, so I actually probably would call it a failure. Um, okay. <laughs> I, you know, if we're we're in the startup business, right? We're supposed to embrace failure anyway, and uh, and and more most importantly, yes, I did I did learn something from that situation slash failure. Um, I I kind of learned that, you know, for me especially, and I'm sure for many other people, like there's there's a level of of being honest with yourself that's really important. And in hindsight, I had obviously made some decisions to try and protect myself and, and some of my ideas from this other person, which means that at some level, I kind of already knew when those things happen that something was wrong. And, and I, I didn't take the time to really sit down and, and consider the implications of those, those decisions that I've made or anything like that. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I just kind of learned, you know, be honest and be introspective with yourself and, and be aggressive with it at times because sometimes those uncomfortable truths are, they're they're there. They're there in front of you, and you can maybe save yourself a lot of pain if you listen for them. All right. Yeah, that's good advice. Um, did you have an exit plan for your for you and your partner at that particular point, or was this just kind of on on the whim kind of thing? I'm just kind of curious. Uh, no, it was very on the whim. Um, it, it was. It, there were a lot of unfortunate things about it, and that's that's why I'm willing to realistically call it a failure. Um, and and I could just say that you know I've 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 learned and I've improved from it so you know all is well but no we we didn't have any kind of an agreement or anything and um, which sounds like a very kind of rookie mistake to make but uh, I'm not a rookie so apparently it's just a mistake that you make you don't have to be a rookie to do that you just have to be silly yeah silly's de you know I like silly but you know that's how it yeah. kind of works things out yeah but yeah you know especially when it comes to partners uh, even though it sounds like you know, like a prenup or something crazy like that. Um, it's good to have one every once in a while, uh, even when you do have a partner. That way, when so if 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 and that's a big if something does come up where you need to sit ways, it's a, a little easier to kind of 
you know, we made these agreements ahead of time. So let's kind of go with that. But I'm glad you learned from that. I'm glad you learned from that. that's the really important thing is learning from those uh, yeah. mistakes and failures. So. All right. So yeah, no, for sure. Yeah. So as you've been going along, uh, it sounds like you've had several businesses and things of that nature. Um, do you have any mentors or people that you look up to or any, anything like that? People that help you move forward in your entrepreneur adventure? Ooh, um, the short answer is yes. Um, the, the longer answer is very long though, because it's actually a lot of people. Um, I've, I've had people at different stages of my career that I've worked with who have been really influential. Obviously I've, I've been very fortunate to have a family again, who is very supportive. And, um, you know, like even my, my father has been running businesses for most of my life. So, you know, I, I've always sort of had that example and I've had, the rest of my family are great examples of things in their own rights as well. And um, yeah, there's, there's been no shortage of that. If I really think about it critically, um, it's, it's, it's just sometimes people look for, they're like, Oh, well I sat down with someone and I asked them about how to make a business and it doesn't really always work that way. Right. It's sometimes it's just kind of, again, in hindsight, you go, Oh, if, you know what? I was listening to what they said at that point, and I learned a very important thing, which I'm now applying. And well, what do you know? They accidentally helped me. That was very nice of them. <laughs> so, I love yeah. I love how you place. They accidentally helped me. That's funny. That's really good. <laughs> how did that work out? I don't know, but it did. So that's the way to do it. <laughs> well, that's good. We're you know, all the better for it. Yeah, that's exactly exactly. You know, sometimes it's not just one person that helped you, but it's several people. You know that that in your life. I kind of piece things together. It's part of, it's pieces of your puzzle of your life that you've put together to make you who you are. And sometimes those pieces of puzzle aren't just one person, but it could be several people. And you take the best parts because this is what I do too. I take the best parts of the people that I, I meet, I learn from and things like that and incorporate them into myself and then give it my own kind of mix. So that way I'm learning from everybody else. Even I'm, I've learned a few things from you, Andrew, and I like incorporating that into myself. And then making that part of who I am. So, yeah. Well, thank you. That's very kind of you. <laughs> I'm also learning things from you. Now, this is, but yeah, no, I, I mean, how does the saying go? It's, uh, it takes a tribe, right? That's, it's a little bit cliche, but I think that's the saying, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what it, it takes a tribe to, to, you know, to, to uh, complete goals and things of that nature. So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so I, I, we might have touched it on it already. I'm not too sure, but I was like talking about in hindsight and the failures that we've had. Which one do you think you're most proud of? I mean, I know it's kind of weird to be proud of a failure, but if you really think about it, there's always one failure you're glad happened. Is there is there one that you might that kind of sticks out in your mind? That's an excellent question. You know what i I do actually think I know which one it would be. So. The, the, my previous business before this one was it's, it's still a website that's around. It's called sync scene as in synchronized scene. Um, I started the idea with a friend back in like 2008. Uh, and the idea is just it's very simple. It's like the watch party things that you get everywhere. Now we wanted to make a place where we could watch videos together because frankly, we've, we have a weird obsession with the avatar, the last airbender cartoon. Um, and yeah, <laughs> so we, you know, we wanted to watch together, but he's in California. I'm over here. So whatever. We made this whole thing. And like, um, we're very proud of the technology and everything. But like, I'm also proud of, um, in hindsight, what I was able to realize as a result of that, not, I feel, reaching its potential. Um, I actually closed that business down. I dissolved it as a corporate entity in January of 2020, which, of course, seems kind of silly because, what, three months later or so, the world <laughs> went into lockdown and all of a sudden uh, having a system where you could watch videos with your friends while you weren't in the same place sounded pretty good. But the the reason I'm proud of it is because I actually realized that we had actually failed long before that. So the the real the realization is that the only way that we could have been successful in that moment when the pandemic started would have been if we had put in the work a couple years before to get like content sharing agreements with these big organizations like Hulu and Netflix and every you know whoever right whoever we could get 
if we had done that at the time, we would have been ready to take advantage of what happened with the pandemic, um, which is probably a weird thing to say, but please understand, I only mean from that business perspective, right? And and we didn't do that. And it's kind of like, well, okay, so we put so much energy into the technology and really trying to figure out how we can make this thing the best technology that we have, and we neglected everything else. And as a result, it it just wasn't going to succeed. And, and I've, I've carried that through with me to this one. We're trying really hard to make sure that we focus on something other than the tech. And, you know, again, this is all in that honesty thing. It's like, if you're, if you're really honest with yourself, are you doing what you need to, to make this happen? Eh, I'm not marketing it. Well, then you're probably not doing enough. So, ha. Huh. <laughs> yeah. You know, and, and it's funny, I've actually had a lot of my guests mention about how the pandemic actually had changed a lot of their thinking. So it's not just you, but I mean, we've learned a lot from from the pandemic. We learned a lot about, you know, what we can use and what we can do. And we also look back and see, well, what if I continued on doing this? But we can't dwell on that too, too much because we need to move forward with things. We can't keep looking back on it. So, And it sounds like that's what you did. You used the experience that you had uh, when you missed that opportunity to make sure that we don't miss that opportunity again in the new uh, entrepreneur adventure that you're in now. Absolutely, yeah. All right. That's great. And you had a lot of good things going for you too. Now it sounds like that everything's work, you know, we're moving forward and, and, you know, making sure that we hit those marks and those stones so we don't have that same problem again. Yeah. I, I will admit it's, it's a very, it is a very new place for me because again, I mean, I've always just focused on that tech and now I'm trying to do other things and, and that does make it scary. I mean, even, even as this being my sixth or seventh business, however you want to figure it out, it's still kind of scary because you start doing new things and you're like, I don't know that I can do this. Um, but yeah, you, you got to give it a shot. You got to push and you know, it's, it's not going to succeed if you don't. That's right. That's for sure. Yeah. You got you got to dip your toe in and see if it's going to work. And even though it might be scary at one point or another, it's going to be a, a truck that we're definitely going to have to take, you know, if we want to move on and we want to grow. And every time I talk and now everybody that's listens to my podcast so far is hear this. Whenever we talk about something okay, scary, we talk about fear and the acronym acronym for fear, F E A R, false evidence appearing real. You know, when you do something like that and you're scared of it, I, I mean, as long as it's not a life or death thing, as long as it's not a saber toothed tiger that's about to, you know, bite your ankle off or something like that, it's probably something that's looking okay. that you, yeah, I know, right? Uh, <laughs> it's probably something you should probably do. You know, even though because I I definitely use fear as as a guide for myself too. Usually, if I fear it, then it's something I have to do, or at least try to do, to see if it's something I can move forward to do. So, you know, always keep that in. I always keep that in mind when I when I think of that. Yeah. No, that's that's a great way of looking at it. It's I think it's the right way, but I guess I still have to wait to see if I'm successful to make sure that it works for me. So, we'll we'll see. We'll see. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. Yeah. Okay, so on the other side of the coin, I'd like to talk about and your vast number of accomplishments and the different business that you've had. What is the one accomplishment that you really are proud of that really sticks out in your mind? Like, I'm so glad that happened, or I'm so glad it made it to this level. I mean, is there one of those that kind of stick out in your mind? It's that uh, that's not a thing that I think about very often. So I, I'm I'm gathering my thoughts here real time, but like I I guess. The, difficulty for me is that as a result of the approach to doing startups and like it, it it really is like you have to work on being really resilient to failure and everything i very much seem to learn more from my failures and everything than i do from my successes and that's not that i don't acknowledge them it's just i put a lot more effort into analyzing those and really considering them um than i do the successes and to be fair maybe that's not a great thing to do um but that being said, I mean, ironically, I think that SyncSync is probably actually also that same thing. Um, for for all that it ended up not being, uh, we did be we've built a beautiful product, um, and that is also evidenced by the fact that that technology is now being repurposed for my current startup. We're we're doing we're using a portion of that technology again because it's just that good and. At a certain level, I mean, yeah, the business failed, but we really learned how to make software well. We learned how to make a good product. Um, and 
yeah, that's I've I wouldn't have traded that for anything. I mean, it, it was around for a long time. It was a uh, business officially from 2014 to 2020, but man, we we made something really great and I do like that. All right, that's great. You know, learning then that's not really a failure. I mean, it's I wouldn't call that a failure at all. I would just say you learned something in the last business that's going to help you propel forward in this one. And it it sounds like that's what you did. You took that that knowledge that you had in that last business and incorporated it into your new one. And something I like to say too, I'm a big I'm big I'm big on acronyms. So I got one for fail too. I don't know if you okay. heard this one already, but uh first attempt in learning. First attempt in learning. I like that. Yeah, and that that one that's really when I think about failure, it's not really failure. It's just an attempt in something that later on can actually work to your advantage. So when you think about I might failing, steal that from you. You can have it. I actually stole that, so it's okay. <laughs> so <laughs> first attempt in learning. Yeah. I really like that. That's that's great. So that's whenever I think about failure, that's definitely the one thing I really I kind of keep in mind when I do like my podcast, my podcast itself actually came out of a failure. When I first started um, wanting to start uh, my entrepreneur adventure, I wanted to be a karaoke DJ and a music DJ. And, um, but I had no equipment. I had nothing. Not, I didn't even have a computer. So I tried to do a, a, a GoFundMe page to try to raise money and it bombed completely. And I made a couple hundred dollars in a couple months. And I'm pretty sure that was my mom that threw in a couple of dollars to make sure I felt like okay about it. But in that, I learned that podcasting was a good way to get your word out there about what you're doing. So it's like, okay, I could do podcasting. And once I started podcasting, I realized I liked the podcasting so much. I, I mean, I still want to do the karaoke thing, but I've really put that aside to do, to to immerse myself in podcasting. And here I am today. And I've talked to amazing people like you, Andrew, and and learning from you and, and everybody else we talk to. So, and, and I listen to your podcast at least, at least once or twice a week while I'm getting caught up here, but uh, I'm. <laughs> I think I'm going to run out of episodes very shortly here, and I'm going to have to obviously skip the one with me in it because nobody likes hearing their own voice for the most part. So. You know what's funny is I hated my own voice until I got about to episode 15, and then I kind of got used. Really? To it, I guess yeah. So. <laughs> oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's just it's just time. It's just time. So you I just get... have to listen to my episode a ton, is what you're saying? Yeah, pretty much. I've listened to my own my own podcast several times. <laughs> But I actually use it more of a, a as a motivation to myself and, and listening to myself progress and grow over time. I mean, that's great. So that's kind of what I. Okay, I'm getting off subject. I'm sorry, everybody. Yeah, I'm sorry, we're okay. getting off subject here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, what I like to do is, if, if you were just kind of came across somebody, and you do this a lot because we actually met on uh, we met on. Uh, on Twitter spaces. Twitter spaces. I'm sure you've come across this a lot, but I'm going to ask you this question anyway. If you come across somebody that's looking to start a brand new entrepreneurship, begin an entrepreneur adventure, what would be the first couple steps of advice that you would actually give them? Say, so, you know, these are the steps you should take when you start your entrepreneur adventure. Do you have anything like that we can use? Uh, yes. Yes, I do. I've, I am noticing as through the course of this, I'm noticing that I definitely am starting to sound like a broken record here, but this honesty thing has become such a big deal to me. Like honesty to self is so important. So one of the things, one of the things I tell everyone now is there's a book called the mom test and it's, it's not a very big book. It's a small book. It's inexpensive, but it is a crucial thing for people to read that want to start a business because um, it basically comes at it from the premise of if you if you don't ask your mother the right way, she will tell you that anything you do sounds good and she won't mean it and she will be effectively lying to you. So the book is all about like learning how to ask people questions without leading them or 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 asking them to like protect you so you can get real feedback for an idea or of an hyp- a hypothesis or anything like that. So. Um, I've, I just tell everyone now, I'm like, listen, I've, I learned about this book uh, from my previous co-founder, actually, uh, credit where due. I learned about it from, from her. And, uh, it's, it's one of those things like you, you have to read it and you have to start doing that. You have to do that customer discovery and ask people those questions the right way. So you can get a real answer as to whether or not what you're doing is something you should put time into. That is fantastic advice. I got to tell you, that's amazing. 
Because, you know, we can talk to anybody. We can talk to like mom or we can talk to our friends or whatever. And they're going to say, oh, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. But, you know, in the back, of, they're in the back of their head. They're just trying to say your feelings or they want to encourage you. But that's not what you want to hear. What you want to hear is that's good, but I would do this or that yeah. sounds great, but blah, 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 blah. You know, every time – like when I ask for advice from a friend or I ask them how it sounds – when they say, oh, it sounds great, my heart actually sinks a little bit. It's like, no, that's not what I want. <laughs> what I want is for you to tell me what you actually think and what I can change to make things better. And that's um, – a lot of that has to do with the um, – I don't know if you've listened, how far along have you listened. But I've made a few changes in the format of my podcast because of actual input I got from other people. And now it actually sounds really good compared to like my first few episodes. And that's really what I want. So, I mean, reading this book, The Mom Test, really sounds like it would be a good idea to think about when you're starting a new business to get – like uh, I've heard one guy um, where he like would go to Starbucks and then he'd pay for the guy behind him and then turn around to that guy and say, hey, I have this idea. What do you think? You know, even just a, oh, complete, wow, yeah. even just a complete stranger, like my, po- my uh, podcast cover that I have, I, I work at a hospital. I have two full-time jobs. One of them is at a hospital. And I went to a complete stranger because there's a lot of people in that hospital. And I went to a complete stranger and say, hey, what do you think of this? Can you tell me what you think of this? And this person has no idea who I am. So they don't have any feelings that they need to save. So they can say, oh, this looks good, but maybe you could do this or that kind of thing, you know? So, I mean, of course you want to, you know, you want to talk to friends and get their ideas. But sometimes it's good to talk to somebody that's completely different, that has no bias to you or kind of a connection to you and get an honest answer about questions that you might have or improvements that you might have. that word again, that honesty. Yeah. And it's, that is, that is what you're looking for. If you're about to put, because as people founding things, be it a podcast or a DJ business or an augmented reality platform or anything, you're going to dump a lot of time and probably a lot of money into this thing. So you need to get honest answers from people, as you just said, about what they actually think. And like, is this a problem that they will actually be happy that someone is solving so on and so forth? Like it's, it's so important. It's so important. That's perfect. You're able to just go up to strangers. That's I got to start doing that. <laughs> Sometimes I don't know what I would it... do at a hospital though. Well, well uh... I'm not like going to hospital beds and going, hey, what do you think of this? You know, <laughs> I know you have a broken leg, but take a look at this. Yeah. But yeah, you that know. looks like it's really painful. <laughs> what do you think of this logo? Is this, uh... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, it's a little less subtle than that. So, all right. So. So one thing I really like to do uh, with my guests, and every single one of them I do, the, uh, do this with is. Uh, I go over our goals. I have a six month goal follow up that I like to do. So, uh, in six months, where do you see yourself in your company? In six months, where do I see myself in my company? So, I I see us in six months being heavily in the marketing phase of our product and really trying to get user growth to to start to you know angle upward and. I am super afraid to give you a number because I know that the next part of this is you're going to say we're going to check in with you in six months. And oh, I you have been listening, haven't you? I have been listening. Yes, <laughs> I told you. Um, I'm not going to give you numbers. I'm just going to say that I want us to be growing steadily mm-hmm. uh, through our marketing efforts, and I want us to be consistent on our marketing. Is that good enough? I guess that's okay. I, well, I can't oh, go no. back in six months and go, so have you been consistent with your marketing? You know, it's just <laughs> – Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you, though. That's that's my thing. I gotta be brutally honest with myself, right? So I, I can tell you right now, we're not being consistent with our marketing. So it's it's actually a, a pain point that we're we're trying to actively trying to solve right now. So okay, yeah. all right. What what are we? Okay, haha. What are you doing to solve that problem at this point? I mean, I mean, I, I know it's kind of a pain point right now for marketing. What are you doing to solve this problem? So we actually just brought somebody on to really focus on our social media efforts for us. Um, because it turns out I'm not very good at social media. Um, yeah, I, it's fun. People look at me. I, I think I have over a thousand followers on Twitter. Like, wow, that's a lot of followers. I'm like, yeah, but I've been on Twitter since 2009. So my growth rate is a little bit stale. Um, and you know, I just, I don't think that I think that way. So 
yeah, after trying it for a while, again, I'm really getting tired of myself saying this word, but you know, I had to be honest with myself and I went, okay, well, I don't want to hold the company back. So how do we solve this? And now we're, now we're bringing somebody on, we're getting them spooled up right now, as a matter of fact. And, um, they, they have a lot of ideas, which I don't understand. Um, and that is really sad, but really great for the business. It's sad for me, but great for the business. So. All right. That's amazing. That's good. It's good that you actually have a plan for that. Sometimes, you know, you, if it's not in your zone of genius, and I do talk about this every once in a while, if it's not in your zone of genius, then you really probably shouldn't be doing it. You know, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I have a zone of genius and I'm actually in it right now. I really feel like my, my podcasting was, is my zone of genius, but like yeah. anything that has to do with like marketing, I'm kind of with you on that's kind of, that's my zone of incompetency. I'm just not good at it. You know, I, I try to do my Twitter stuff, which is good, but I mean, there's so many other platforms out there that's just like LinkedIn. I, LinkedIn really is where I should be because that's where most of my people are. But for some reason, it's like, it's like reading Greek. You know, I have no idea what's going on or how that even works. Yeah. So, but sticking in your zone to genius, that's the important thing. And when you can't do that, yeah, when you can't stay in your zone of genius, put out to somebody where it is their zone of genius and let them work for you. It's it's tough too because a lot of the a, a very common narrative I'll say for startup uh, advice and everything is you just got to suck it up and you got to do everything yourself. And it's like, well, yeah, to a certain extent you do. You have to try and get started and you have to do these things, I guess. But you also have to be able to recognize when you're holding yourself and your company back. And you need to make a change. You you don't want to be the reason that you don't succeed. All right. Thank you so much, Andrew. That's awesome. I, it just seems like a, that's the ongoing theme right now is honesty in this, yeah. in this particular podcast. And I really appreciate that. That's something that a lot of people don't have anymore or, you know, are afraid of is, is being honest with each other and with themselves even. So, all right. So. What I'd like to do here is give you an opportunity here to talk about yourself and your business. This is your time to shine here, Andrew. I want you to tell us okay. about your business and how we get a hold of you, okay? Okay. I'll give it a shot. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for having me on here. Um, my business's name is Untethered IO, and we're building a platform, an augmented reality platform, as I said. Um, you can go check out the platform. It's actually available in the App Store. Um, just go to joinwaterfall.com, one word, no hyphenation or anything. And there's buttons on there for both the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. Um, but yeah, download it, give it a whack, and uh, tell us what you think. We're looking for feedback right now. So uh, we'd be happy to hear from you and have you join the community. All right, that's great. And how do we get a hold of you personally, if that's okay with you? I don't know. Is there an email or anything? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, I'm on LinkedIn and I'm on Twitter. Most of anything. Um, Twitter is probably the one social network that I am most reliably on. So I'm Andy M 84 on Twitter and, uh, you could just look for Andrew mail on uh, LinkedIn. Just look for the guy with the long hair that looks like it's slicked back. That's probably me. <laughs> probably <laughs> not a lot of Andrew mails on there. <laughs> All right. Andrew, thank you so much for being on the Undiscovered Entrepreneur. Uh, it's been amazing. Uh, I know we learned a whole lot from you today. And uh, I, I am going to check back with you in six months and to see how oh, things God. are going. All okay. Right. Well, I guess that just means I got to work harder then. That's so right. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> All right. Andrew, thank you so much. All right, Scuba Believers, thank you so much. And uh, make sure you stay tuned for the wrap up. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a good evening. <laughs> Right, school believers, that was Andrew. Boy, what a great episode that was. I really enjoyed talking to Andrew. He had a lot of great information about different types of ways to do things in the businesses that he's run and experience that he's had. So did you pick up on that actual theme that we did? I sure did about halfway through. Honesty. Honesty was a very big theme in this episode, not just for other people and being able to talk to other people and be honest with them. But honesty for yourself, honesty to yourself, speak honestly about yourself and how you feel about things and 
you'll definitely feel better if you could be honest with yourself. So when when you're going along your entrepreneur adventure, just make sure honesty is definitely a part of what you're doing, especially for yourself, among other people too, but definitely for yourself. All right. So a little bit about myself, and I'm going to be honest with myself too. Uh, we are in off season right now. So things are getting really, really tight. Um, so we're just going to see what we need to do to survive. We're, we're kind of in a survival mode right now for this t- particular time of year. So let's see what's going to happen. I'm really excited to see how I actually get through this next off season. So a couple of things I'm currently working on right now. Currently, I'm actually working on a newsletter. And I'm, I'm going to use this basically to help other people with some information that I have. And it's basically the top five things you need to know when you start your entrepreneur adventure. Five key things that are really important to me that I want to make sure that you know about. So keep an eye out for that. I'll keep you updated on that for when it's done so you can get your hands on it. And you want to definitely subscribe to the podcast. Hit that subscribe button. That way you can keep posted on the things yet to come. I've also started a Patreon. I think I've mentioned the Patreon a couple of times, and I actually have a really awesome show. It's a behind-the-scenes show called Behind the Box, and what this basically shows is a few minutes before I start my interview and a few minutes after I actually stop the camera from what we're actually doing right now. So if you want to see a few more things, a few more minutes extra that you don't get to see in this normal platform, go to my Patreon at tuepodcast.net backslash Patreon, and... uh, See if there's anything there you'd like to have. There's all kinds of different programs that you could get into, anywhere from uh, just general support all the way up to actual coaching with me, DJ Scoob. Also started a Kofi. Uh, that's a kind of a new one to me, just trying to learn it. So it's basically Kofi. With a, there's a dash in the center. It's ko-fe.com. If you want to find that one, it's kofi.com backslash ue podcast so take a look at that i'm probably going to do the same thing as my patreons have some extras in there for you to enjoy another really great thing that's been happening lately is i have actually been rating really high in good pods and it's been an amazing adventure for me so if you can go into good pods if you want to go into uh apple pods if you want to go into spotify give me a five-star rating i would really appreciate that way we get the word out to all the new school believers out there that want to hear what we have that might possibly want to hear all this great information to start their entrepreneur adventure. If you want to get a hold of me directly, you're more than welcome to contact me on Twitter, which is basically my home right now at DJ Scoob at S K O O B 2021. You could also reach me on a Facebook group that I just started. I'm really excited to start a community with all my school believers out there. And you can find that at T U E podcast.net backslash F-B Scoob, S-K-O-O-B, and that'll take you right there. Uh, Start joining my community, and I would love to help teach you right now. If you get in right now, you're basically one-on-one with me. (laughs) So this is the time to get in if you want to have some just direct contact with me. All right, Scoob Believers, thank you for another great episode, and we'll see you in part two of The Experienced Entrepreneurs. All right, everybody. Thank you. (laughs) Bye-bye. there dj scoob here and i just want to personally say thank you for listening to my program i really hope you learned something tune in in two weeks to listen to another brand new entrepreneur and remember i can i am i will and i'm doing it today gracias gracias thank you good por favor no no thank you No thanks. No? Please no. De nada, Luis. You are welcome, Luis. There we go. Si, yo soy Juan. Si, yo soy Juan. Juan. De nada, Juan. You are welcome, Juan. There we go. No, lo siento. No, No, lo siento. siento. Si, por favor, gracias. De nada. Si, yo hablo español. Si, yo hablo... Oops. Si, yo 
hablo español. español. Gracias, Juan. De nada, Luis. Lo siento. Pardon. Perdón. There we go. Tu hablo inglés. No lo siento. Por favor, no. Thanks, no. Please, no. Ugh, that's why I keep getting wrong. Por favor, no. Please, no. There we go. And we did it. As a worker of two full-time jobs, running a podcast and coaching, every minute counts in my day-to-day. It's hard to be consistent in any of my social medias. And at this point, I cannot hire a social media manager. Pinnacle AI to the rescue! I've been using Pinnacle AI for a couple of weeks now. I've seen big improvements in my outreach and consistency in all my social medias. Do you want to save time and increase your productivity too? Go to tuepodcast.net backslash AI for more information. Save yourself time and grow your brand. Try it now and see what it can do for you.